my back has been killing me. I've been taking kickboxing, y'all. So I started taking kickboxing, and my back been killing me. But it's, it's, it feels good. Like, I enjoy the... Catch me slipping on the street. But today I wanted to come back because I finally read a book. I read a book. I read a book, book, book. Um, <laughs> I finished Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. And I wanted to come and give my review, my statements, my comments. But before we get started, you know I got to tell y'all all about the things I want, <laughs> the things I need. Of course, my merch line is now available. This is a tea from the merch line. It's called Take a Trip. It has like a little mushroom on there. I love this tea. It's so comfortable. It's my second day wearing it. Do not judge me. Um, check that out. The uh, descript the link is in my bio. I also have books, guys. My book is here for sale. So I went through a lot of trouble with getting things done, and I actually got a box of misprints. And that box of misprints really delayed me shipping everything to everybody. But it was more important to me that I gave you quality, the vision that was anticipated, than getting it to you in a hurry. And so I appreciate everybody that's bought one. They're on the way. I just could not give you something that I wasn't proud of or, or, or consider my best work. And I hope you can appreciate that because that's just the truth. I really hope that you can appreciate that, um, that reality of things. But you can always go ahead to my website and purchase it in the link below. The link is below. Well, now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, we're going to get into hood feminism. I want you to treat this video like you would treat um, your waitress. I'm your host. <laughs> so if you like what I'm talking about today and I break down things for you, then you can do three things. You can comment, you can like, or you subscribe. Any of those things really help me to kind of reach my great dreams, continue producing books, continue producing merch, continue creating videos. So just those simple things that mean nothing to you mean the world to me. And I want to thank you so much in advance. Now, now to the T, to the T. Okay, so Hood Feminism by Mickey Kim Kendall is just pretty much a book of essays about the female experience when you are not a straight white woman so what? so yeah this book is for <laughs> this book is talking about what it's like to be a woman who wants equality when you don't fall into the narrative of being straight and white so hood feminism is for anybody who doesn't fall in that category which is most of us right like this for marginalized communities and it talks about how mainstream feminism really isolates a lot of us out of the march towards equality because it doesn't really represent the things in our lives that matter and so overall the book didn't make me upset or illuminate anything for me but it, it affirmed a lot of the core things I, I think about and I believe in, even if I didn't really um, connect it with my feminism, it was things that irked me. Like he talked about um, the war on drugs and how people in um, lower income communities typically sell drugs and, and how it, how young teens may start selling drugs rather than pursuing their education and how that doesn't reflect a person's lack of ambition but a person's lack of resources and perhaps their need to support their families because drug money is fast and if you have to choose between eating and reading you're probably going to choose reading and if you have siblings and parents and grandparents who need to keep the lights on and you can go out and make a couple hundred bucks in an hour that when that's your very last, your only resource and the only thing you see, you're likely to do it. So she re really reaffirmed a lot of my core ideas about drugs and education and um, domestic violence and poverty and shelter and food. And it really made, it enriched it because I was like, okay, this is exactly my feminism. This is the kind of feminism that I understand, you know where black men um, are not 
my oppressor in the way that mainstream women feminism may try to call out the patriarchy i feel the need to kind of work in congruence with a partner of a, ma a male partner because i want a traditional structural family right um i love the way the story was told mickey kendall kind of broke it down in essays and she brought up a lot of her personal experiences historical references popular culture references and things of that nature to really exemplify her claims and of course this evidence really helps to support her ideas and help brings clarity to what she's trying to say so i think she did excellent there i think that was great and very well done um there are no main characters of course because it's a non-fiction work but through her work mickey kendall really shows her personality she really shows what it means to be a black woman she really shrugs off that persona of academic know-it-all and brings it home like i'm not talking i'm talking to you as an academic but a lot of my evidence is coming from my personal experience and she kind of champions the conversation that a lot of people in this predicament don't get the opportunity or the platform to articulate on this level so i love the way she used her voice to speak for lower frequencies and talk for those who don't always get an opportunity to be heard yes say it with your chest i appreciated that the parts of the book that really really stood out to me had to be when she talks about how um what's that damn girl name the durham girl got upset when the football player wouldn't even look at her and she felt as if he had some way did her wrong and she was like how did he do you wrong simply by not acknowledging you and the level of entitlement that is brought to white women based on their like conversations and comments about African Americans and about how we should behave and it was interesting to me because historically we know that black men are could could have been and this is lawful could have been lynched for simply looking in a white woman's direction and here we are 2020 where this white woman is upset because this man isn't looking at her and finding more attention and appreciation for his phone girl so i thought that was incredibly poignant and indicative of what she's trying to say I also love when she explained um, Dion, her classhood friend, who kind of had to stop going to school, stop being educated in order to start taking care of his family because a lot of people and a lot of these marginalized communities definitely face that reality, even in 2020. And I think that a lot of times we, as privileged intellectual people, disregard some of the very real choices that have to be made on the ground level it's very easy to get on our hierarchy get on our horse and say well why don't you just go to school why didn't you just do this it was right there available to you and i think about how your life and your day is 100 percent different from the life and the day of the person next to you even if even if and she says this in her book even though they grew up in the same neighborhood they st and she was in poverty and she made it out she still realizes she had privileges that her neighbor didn't have so because you have parents at home you have an extended family that's catering to you you have access to resources around you you have a gift that teachers are pouring into it's going to be a lot different for you than it is for the kid who doesn't know how to express himself who lives in trauma who is alone 90 percent of the day who who is stressed about how he's going to get the lights on for him and his younger siblings how he's looking at one of maybe an adult or a supervisor a supervision supervisionary individual for him is high on drugs those are different circumstances and you're gonna have to come to different realizations on how to deal with those different circumstances if you truly want to be a feminist and you have to start thinking about these things as a feminist because these are feminist issues if we are the mothers of these children and the nurturers of these children then it is also our job as individuals to make sure that they have a safe space to be raised because if i'm a mother education is on the forefront of my thought process even if it's not my child as a woman 
and an educator, it, even reading that chapter had to re assess me and my work and repurpose me and what I need to do and empathetically when I come across a child who struggles with trauma and these traumas lead to triggers that make you not want to deal with them, right? You still have to. You still have to. So I really like that. The major theme that really sticks out in it is just the consistent, re consistent re reiteration that mainstream feminism is not or the best is not the only or the best feminism around right that you we can be feminist individuals while also catering to our communities in a more holistic way that the true that the feminism that's brought to us is very performative and very allyship and very isolating to women of color to african americans in general to any person who is not me re reaching middle class or higher class right poverty is not considered all the time when we talk about feminism and the things that go on the forefront of feminism have very little to do with the things that happen to us in our everyday lives so she really talks about that and brings those type of values home for us and the work and i love it love it love it that girl was she was dotting her eyes and crossing her t's throughout the work i mean she really was i mean she did that. Um, yeah, so this book is really for any... As a woman of color, like it really affirmed a lot of the things I already believe. But I think it could be really... I've, I've had it recommended to me by white women, by black women, by older women, by younger women. I've shared it. I've gifted it. So I think as a woman, read it. It doesn't matter. It, either it, Even if it reaffirms, even if it causes strain and how you think I think that it can be very illuminating right and I think even for men because this book really doesn't go into deep detail about men right I think sometimes we think of feminism in a way that's like kill all the boys kill all the boys but it's really not that it's about creating a compromise and a union between the two sexes and I think this work really kind of lends itself to doing that so I say even the man should read it. Um, again, it's a nonfiction work. It's a really easy to read. You can listen to it on Audible like I did. But I do recommend it. I think it was great. And I'm so happy I finally finished it. And for the people who recommended it to me, thank y'all. I'll go ahead and shout y'all all right now. That is Amy. Girl, you, you great recommendation. As well as my girl, Michelin. Oh, I keep saying her name wrong. Naked. There we go. You guys recommended me this book. So I want to appreciate you guys right here on the video. Other than that, I have some great books recommended to me by some of my amazing, amazing followers, including Damien, including Francis, including um, Brandon, so many people. So just know I read your comment. I'm getting to it. Just taking me a little minute. But that's it for me right now. Thank you for watching. Make sure you comment, you like, you subscribe. Check out all the details in the description box. Go shop. If you want, it means the world to me. Have a great day. And I will catch y'all. I'll catch y'all soon. Right now I'm reading. What's my next book? War and Peace. I need to be reading War and Peace. So the next time I come in here with a book review, it's going to be War and Peace. It's been real. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Be safe.